Chemical fume hoods are designed to protect users from chemicals, but only if used correctly. The white polypropylene fume hoods are designed for acids and bases only. Stainless steel fume hoods are for organics and solvents only. Please consult posted sides on the fume hoods for allowed chemicals or ask the Nano 3 staff. Our hoods protect users from chemical fumes by forming a vertical laminar flow of air that covers the sash opening. If any area of the vents are covered, your protection will be compromised. Never cover the vent holes with clean room cloths or chemical bottles. For the hood to function correctly, the sash must be lowered to the appropriate level as marked. Before engaging in a chemical experiment, plan out what chemicals you are going to use, read all safety data sheets, and ensure you are using the correct PPE and, if necessary, secondary containment. Let's go over the ideal setup for general chemical use. First line your work area with clean room wipes, making sure not to cover any vent holes. Next gather the appropriate glassware and tools for your experiment. Then stage the first chemical of your process. Finally, label your work area with your name, contact information, start end time, date, and the full chemical name next to the glassware in use. For long recipes, push your experiment to the back of the hood and do not leave chemicals in the hood for longer than 24 hours. In summary, prepare the work surface, gather tools and glassware, stage required chemicals, label work area, and lower sash to the appropriate level. When handling hazardous chemicals, additional controls are required for your safety, such as personal protective equipment and secondary containment. Full PPE consists of chemical resistant aprons, goggles, face shield, and heavy nitrile gloves. First, put on your goggles, then the chemical resistant apron. Apply face shield and adjust the tension knob so it fits securely on your head. Finally, put on the heavy nitrile gloves, ensuring that the gloves go over the chemical resistant apron. This order ensures minimal cross contamination from the heavy nitrile gloves. You are now prepared to handle hazardous chemicals safely. At the end of your experiment, thoroughly rinse and dry the heavy nitrile gloves. Make sure solid waste is disposed of in the appropriate waste container. If using hydrofluoric acid, it is important to remember the locations of the antidote, calcium gluconate. The closest antidote is on the sash above the first acid base hood. There is also one in the first aid box at the closest emergency shower directly outside the wet processing bay. When using hazardous chemicals, Follow all guidelines and hazard control plans. Check whether additional containment is required and wear the appropriate PPE. After your experiment, store PPE correctly, thoroughly rinsing and fully drying. At the end of your processing, you must properly dispose of used chemical waste. Never pour any chemical down the drain. Go to the waste bottle storage and identify the appropriate waste bottle for your chemical by checking the chemical waste tag attached to the bottle. For your safety, always double check that the chemical being disposed of is listed on the waste tag. All waste bottles must have secondary containers and vented caps to prevent overpressurization. Take the waste bottle to the fume hood. The waste bottle must always stay in its secondary container. Set the waste bottle and secondary container in the sink and use the funnel to prevent spills. Pour your chemical slowly, taking care to note if any chemical reaction takes place. If you notice a chemical reaction taking place, for example fuming or bubbling, place the bottle to the back of the hood and close the hood. Ensure that you leave a note indicating a reaction is taking place and notify staff. Never fill beyond the max fill line. After pouring your waste, rinse the funnel in the DI water sink and place the cap tightly back on the waste bottle. Return the waste bottle to the waste storage cabinet. Solid waste, such as contaminated wipes, should be disposed of in their designated waste trash can. Should a chemical spill occur, use the following as a guideline. Complete details, as always, can be found in our policies and procedures document. Our emergency numbers are available by the phone at the end of the wet processing bay. For a small spill, absorb the spill and dispose of the wipes in the appropriate waste container. For larger spills, if appropriate, spill response kits are available. First, inform staff, 
nearby users, and place spill signage. Remember to wear full PPE when cleaning a spill. Use the acid or base neutralizer spray to neutralize the spill and absorbent pads to clean the spill. Double bag and tag any waste generated from the spill. If you feel you are unable to handle cleanup, isolate the area with signage and notify staff. Ensure other users are aware of the spill. If after hours, contact the emergency response team. For unknown spills, always treat as if it's hydrofluoric acid. Wear full PPE and test with the pH test strips.